Well, it's 65 million acres. So it's 65. You took 60 million acres, left mm. Murray only with five. Mm. And um, so uh, the reparation would be uh, you compensate the loss, the opportunity cost of not Murray not accessing the land. Yes. And that means we would get billions back. And in that case, and Bob Mahuda was onto this, his version for the Tainui settlement was they would then start buying every dairy farm that came up for sale. Yes. And I think in their settlement, I think they have a little clause in there which gives them first option on buying back the land and the Crown coughs up the money. So you can get your land back a lot of ways. Yes, yeah, yes. I, I guess so, you know, so we'll okay. take, so yeah. okay, as long as we get 60, uh, 60 million acres back and uh, or the uh, true value yes, I, true I guess value. I can yeah. hear then you can buy the land yeah and the problem is uh, like you said the 1% to 3% yep. uh, it's, it's petty cash, petty uh, cash. Yeah. Um, most hapu and iwi are, are falling over uh, with a 12 million dollar payment and they, they, it's getting used up by the trust board yeah well what can you do 12 mm. million dollars hell it doesn't even buy you one trawler for your no. fish fishing quota yeah, you need yeah. forty million dollars for a decent trawler. Mm. You know, it's, it, it, you, 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 could, you wouldn't build one factory for twelve million. No, that's right. It's not, it's right. It's, it's just, it doesn't go anywhere. No, you no. can't build a hotel. No. For twelve million, a good sized hotel, you know. So once again, the people are, are left destitute and, and well, it's poor people poor. seeing a check. Wow, that's more than we've ever seen in our lives. So what? You know, I'm, I'm, you know, try hard not to be too judgmental on our own people, my own uncles and aunties, but. Yeah. I can understand. I can understand that the, they, they're looking well, at the, la the money, then, oh, yeah, and, yeah. And rather than yeah. the value yeah. of the land. Yeah. yeah. So, but even when you say, I'm um, like, you know, I've been saying, look, take it, say, we accept this as a deposit. Mm. Yeah. The twelve million, the twenty million, is only a deposit. deposit. That's right. For the hardship, and uh, and, and so we can get on with it. And in the meantime, we're still waiting for the rest of it. Yeah. You know? Um, but there's a peculiar thing about New Zealand jurisprudence which is um, different to North America but Canada and the United States and most other parts for some reason or other somewhere in our judicial thinking in our legal thinking um, the idea that um, justice is best served if the Crown can afford to dispense the justice now in America in North America and in Canada Stolen land has to be given back, period. That's it. A theft is a theft. And it's no good the robber saying pleading poverty. Mm -hmm. and, and we have a different judicial... Uh, yes, um, yeah. judicial. So our appeal courts have said to a lot of the tribal claimants, yep, you're absolutely right, it was unfair. The settlement's unfair and it's all wrong. And you've been ripped off yet again. But hey, life's a bitch. Sorry well, about that. That's, right, that's what they say. And that's, that's a new kind of legal thinking that's oh, pernicious, yeah. really. Well, I think they've probably stacked it up for themselves, really, <laughs> haven't they? Well, it's kind of, you know, how the courts work on precedence. I think you find there's precedent building up in the 18, 19, 1870s, 80s. So all the previous courts said this. and So it's going to take a courageous court to change it. Change it around. And we're just waiting for the right group of judges yes, yes. and other people to, to make the courageous decision. Hence why uh, Helen Clark refused to take some of these claims to the World Court um, I'm when, sure when Māori tried to yes, take yes, them to yes, the World yes. Courts. They, there's, they... there's one proposal which came from some Harvard academics who were advising indigenous peoples around Central America and they reckon stop fiddling around with the petty cash and take the New Zealand take New Zealand government to the International Court of Justice that's right. because they said you'll win it. Yes, that's right. Because the theft is the theft and the robber has to give it back. If not in, in, in kind, whatever way. If it's not. And, um, but try, trying to get Maori Treaty Settlement people to take their eyes off the pute there and look at the big picture yes. and be more patient. And be more patient. And they're under pressure to get some money, take the money and run sort of stuff. So I'm, I, I think that probably what we need is a spearhead group mm -hmm. of people who just go against their own hapu thinking, go against it, and say we're going to take the New Zealand 
uh, taken to court and these guys have all offered to do their work pro bono because we couldn't afford them um, but they reckon you'd win an international court and then the New Zealand, no New Zealand government could stand the, uh, the embarrassment of it. Now I've seen... And then they might turn around and say right oh, from now on 5%, 3% of every annual budget goes back to full reparations. And I, I still think that's the... See, at the moment, trying to get Ngāpui claimants to think like that when their heads are just full of the claim, uh, I, I, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I'm busy advising them. I'll go with your claim with that, because, you know, I'm, they're my clients in many ways, so if that's yeah. what they want to do. Yeah. But don't forget this. Yeah. These options. Yes, there's another, you still got... It doesn't mean to say, it just means you're putting it off. So our lot down in Wanganui, hmm. we signed on the f- November last year to oh, settle yeah. the Wanganui. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So just bef- on the 26th of September, I filed injunctions against that against them. Oh yeah, good. Yeah. And um, and those injunctions we um, filed them in the Māori Land Court yeah, yeah, yeah. as a record keeper. Yeah, yeah. Now we're about to proceed with a <laughs> summary of proceedings act yeah, 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 yeah. and drag them through the court systems and hold the entire process. Be popular. Yeah, but my tupuna are uh, more important than these oh. settlements of a bit of cash. Yes, yes. yes. So um, at this particular moment, one week after we signed that settlement, the um, APEC conference took place in Hawaii oh, okay. right, and right, we were right. right in the bed with the TPP on yeah, track yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so um, tell you what I'll give you another a view on the TPP eh? um, um, it's a it's a double edged tire hard that one um, and as Jane has pointed out one side of it is, has all these risks but the other side it's as risky for the crown to sign it Hey, because what does it give us? Uh, that's why I'm, I'm quietly in favour of it, as I have with every other free trade agreement. Because it actually means, so wherever a free trade agreement goes, Maori goes with that agreement. Yes. Yeah. That is why yeah, Maori trade. can go directly yeah. into China now. We don't have to go through the Crown. Simply because the free trade agreement has a treaty clause, so we don't have to go through the New Zealand government to deal directly with China. And that's true for all of the free yeah. trade agreements yeah. in Southeast Asia. Yeah. So you, so you sort of think, oh, okay. So it's like these, they're all double-edged things. There's risks over here, but actually there's an opportunity over here. So, um, Well, that's what Fonterra banked on when the free trade agreement opened yes, up. Yes, yes, yes. Was yes. that they would have access to the Chinese yes, yes. economy. But the double-edged sword is that the Chinese had access to our our lands yes, yes, to buy yes. up mm. so they've yes. been here buying up yeah. large yes um, are we buying land in China well yeah, there's the, 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 there's still more Europeans buying New Zealand land than Chinese by a long measure but nobody's made an issue of that to focus on the Chinese because I keep an eye on the Chinese one yeah. I do a lot of work with Chinese with scholars yeah. and um, and so it's easier to whip up the anti-Chinese thing as opposed to thing A. Mm. So, um, so, um, but the, oh, there's a group out here, uh, the Rafiti group, who have direct relationships with Chinese, eh? and the Chinese, um, uh, the only reason they want land is they need food security for yeah. their burgeoning population, sure. because I've, I've had meetings here and I've said to them, well, even if a Chinese people buy your dairy farm up the road there, I said, they can't pick it up and take it back to China. If it's a factory, they can buy your factory, pick it up and walk away with it, eh? So I said, so, um, so you, it's not as if you've lost the land, you just lost usage. Mm. You, see, you, see, you see what I'm getting at, eh? Mm. And you don't get the benefits mm. of the usage. Uh, but... Um, what happens if you go into an, an agreement with Chinese um, because they're more amenable and here they're more amenable mm. to, um, to um, 
we'll work out a deal with with, with mine. Yes. And uh, and part of that deal would be uh, a cut in the in the in the return. No. So it's kind of it, now their predicament is we need protein, we need food. Mm. The population is doubling every thirty years. Yes. You know, and. Um, and they've stopped the one-child policy They've now. stopped the one-child, so yeah. But even then, the one-child well. policy was only applied to one part of the Chinese community, eh? and that was oh. the Han, oh. the dominant Chinese group. Okay. And what the Communist Party wanted to was give all the indigenous Chinese a chance of population to grow. Oh, I it see. It was quite an enlightened policy, in many oh. ways. Imagine if Maori had, could put a, a one-child policy on all Pākehās and let Maoris have the baby. We, we'd be in favour of such a policy. Mm -hmm. That's probably right too. <laughs> you know, when you think about the rationale of it, okay, let's, you know. But uh, we wouldn't, <laughs> yeah, so so it's just finished now, but uh, but it's kind of partly worked. It slowed down the, mm. the Han population mm -hmm. in a significant way, to, to almost to the point now it's, they're not having enough young people to look after the old people now. So what do you think of the crown being removed from the dollar? From the dollar? Well, um, I'm not. Um, I don't. I don't know because I can't. I can't see the crown giving up on that. And then replace with uh, what is it, uh, Puti or Mata? Yeah. Um, the, the, your problem is, is um, who will recognise the money? Well, it's in circulation now. Yes, but who recognises it? Who who trades with it? Exactly. And invests with it? You see, that's the that's the issue. Um, exactly. Hongi Hika faced this, uh, this exactly the issue uh, and the very first um, coincidence so I'm doing some work on because uh, the White Train Trump want to know why he supported the introduction of the British pound which he did he encouraged it you see and um, and why didn't he go with the bank why didn't he go with Maori money hmm. and um, uh, he basically just said because no one in the world would give a Take it, but they will note. Oh, the King William's the head is on it. Yeah. The money of the Murray will have the value of the money, and uh, so he he looked at florins, pound notes, and uh, it didn't matter to him whose head was on it as long as the right one, and as long as the money he was earning, generating around here, was used. That was his. Rational. So no. that, that's, and that being correct, just as much as having a flag on the back of the ships to enter the oh, ports. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Now we have a currency without the crown's yeah. head on it. Oh right, okay. And that's been flowing into our circulation yeah. for about a month now. Yeah. yeah. But still, um, yeah, I'm not, you know, it, it doesn't... Um, but the government of the day is still one producing the money. Oh, they're printing it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. With yeah. no security. No, well, that's right, that's right. But that's that, that's their prerogative, and um, and uh, so you know. So you ask, you you ask. So I'm, I mean, I'm in favour. I'm, I'm a Republican. I think we should ditch the crown. Who would accept that notebook? Hmm. Why would they accept that note if she's gone? Oh, they, 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 well, in China's case, um, what they did was um, was looked at the value of, of New Zealand economy. You're healthy and strong. You're not strong because you've got the Queen's head. Well, there. They, they also know that we're you know. carrying at least a $200 billion debt. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. And that's all Federal Reserve, yeah, IMF. Yeah. But they, but the, we, 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 I don't know the current percentages, but they, the debt is. Um, is serviceable at the moment. Yes, but yes. we've got decreasing receipts. And um, but um, but like all all foreign exchange earnings, these things go up and down. Um, and ours is going down. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, our, and our interest is going up. Yes, that's right. But and what he hasn't declared is his mirror back. Um, yeah. What do they call it? Mortgage back derivatives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which are running way ahead of the. Yeah, the national debt. Yeah. Agreed. So my question then is, who's going to pay the debt when we when the country can't? Because that's coming. Well, yeah. Well, 
mill, <laughs> it would be, most taxpayers would be large, paying a large chunk of it. I'd say so. Along with other taxpayers, mm-hmm. you know. Um, uh, but, but, the, but the upside of it is the, is the, um, we still... Kia ora. Oh, hello. Hey, how are you? Yeah. Nice to see you. Mm. Mm. Oh. Hello. 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 So we, we just made ourselves at oh, home, yes. we were just talking. Yeah. Oh, right. okay, and okay. we just so many, you know, we just meet every day yes, right. where possible. Things yes. are changing every day yes, as yes. you read. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, <laughs> well, we, we had a corridor with Keith this morning at the Mangani Bridge. You are? Um, I'm Craig. Kilda Craig. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're in Auckland. In Auckland, yeah. yeah. Oh. And uh, we told him we were coming up because we want to have a it all about here, Waka Putanga and doing the you know, film, film on it. Right. <coughs> so we told them we were coming up, but we just sort of you, came did in. Did you here and carry on about how the museum won't allow the documents to travel? No, no, well, that's, well, that's no, a, that, no, that's that'll a that'll big cooper. No, that'll be an issue, yeah. yeah. It's a big cooper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Opens on the 5th, and there's yeah. only one place for those documents yeah. it's over there. The National Archives won't hand them over. Oh. Are we too old? Mm. Are we too old? Yeah. They're lying. Yeah. They're lying. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the documents you refer to? It's still in the National Archives here on Hill Street out of Wellington. Yeah. So they're holding the back Ah, oh, well, the, that's where they deposited okay. in, the, in, the, in the special vault. Very great vault. So, um, they can travel. Yes. They can yes, travel. Yes, yes. See how they travelled to Darawa? <laughs> yeah. They can travel. Yes, yes, yes. Well, the thing is, you know, they, they they're holding on to Taonga that belongs to Tangata yeah, Whenua. that's right. Yeah, sure, sure, So sure, why, sure. why aren't they providing uh, a secure story. museum yes, yes. for Tangata Whenua? Yeah, we're getting one just across oh. the bridge. Yes, it's going to oh, open nice. on the fifth. About $10 million oh. worth. Right, because we're, we're talking about the same yeah. thing with, you oh, know, Ngāti Tors, artefacts and ah. Taonga. Yeah. It was a big replica. So, hard to get hold of it. Is it finished, did you say? It's so the claims? Yeah, uh, when the hearings are off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yes. the Lama Kaitiaka is only a one year old. Who does that Pātaka yeah. belong to? It's like the critique of the claim. I'm the Kaitiaka elder. So, what's the National Trust? No, no, you said in 2D. The Prawn is the chairman? Yeah, but it's that same purpose. So, how come it got out of your site? Well, it was down here. I had it up on the... Oh, the crooks. Up on the back wall, then when the white hat had come in, they're the sellout. Right? So you, so but that's okay, I can say that because I see it to his face. <laughs> yes. There are so many you know, around. I, he knows where I stand. Oh, yeah. 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 So there's a few, a few different um, trustees on there. Yeah, yeah. Māori, Tin uh, so Henari is another so one. So the land belongs to who? Just going to go around and ask us. Oh, oh, we know who the whakapapa is to that land. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's a customary land. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But we knew we had to come, so we mm-hmm. identified the door. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it, this is what happens when everything's open yeah. and you yeah. offer your manaki tanga and all the rest, <laughs> it's the abuse you get. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, try and get in, break a window to get in and have a shower, camp over there and use the come from what I. Um, so, yeah. you want a story? Yeah, yeah. I'll give you a story? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lots of stories so what, you about know, who, who made the flag, the Kōkahitanga flag, how yeah, important yeah. it was, yeah. where did these churches fit into everything. Do you know the story of what, where this Couldn't comes from? Couldn't have a clue. No. Okay. No, I don't know.